In this video, we're going to be solving multi-operational problems using the order of operations, but this time we're going to be focusing on grouping symbols. If you are watching this video, I assume that you have a basic understanding for the order of operations. Today we're going to be focusing solely on the grouping symbols. So as you see, we're starting off with quite a complicated problem. Before we begin to solve this problem, we're going to take a look at another problem to see why it's important to have a variety of grouping symbols to use. Let's take a look at this problem here. So without grouping symbols, if you had a problem that looks like this, the first thing that you would solve would be 32 divided by 8. However, I don't want to actually solve it in that order. Say I actually wanted to solve the 8 times 2 minus 10 first. I would put parentheses around it. But then before dividing by 32, I actually wanted to multiply it by 5 first, and then I'd put parentheses around that. And again, before I would divide by 32, I would want to subtract the 14 first. If I use parentheses in all of those occasions, it's going to be very difficult for me to understand which set of parentheses go with which. So we have a few different options. The first option that we have, as you know, are the parentheses. So if I wanted to solve this first, I'm going to put that on the innermost one. The second option that I have are called brackets. And those are the, they are shaped more like edged parentheses. So if I wanted to multiply the 5 next, that is where I would put the brackets in. The final option I have are braces. So if I wanted to solve the minus 14 next, I would put the braces on the outside. And as you can see, there's an example down here of the order that they follow. So when solving a problem that has all of these symbols, we have to follow certain steps. We are going to solve the innermost grouping and solve it from left to right. So in this case, the innermost grouping is always the parentheses and then you would solve the brackets, and then finally, third, you would solve the braces. Let's look back at our original problem up here. Here you will see that we have some parentheses, and then we have some brackets as well. But we're still going to follow the traditional order of operations. So I would have to place my stop sign over the addition symbol that is not in parentheses, and I am going to then circle my terms. Once I do that, I am now going to refer to my order of operations, and it's going to tell me to solve for parentheses first. So inside my parentheses, I'm going to solve 3 plus 2, which is 5, and bring everything else down. Now I still have to add my stop sign, so I will, and then circle my terms. And then I'm going to solve for my parentheses again. Now I'm still within this bracket, which stands as my parentheses. And because I have division and addition, and I know that division comes before addition, the first thing I'm going to solve is 25 divided by 5, which is 5. And then I'm going to bring everything down again. Now, as I move on to the next step, where I'm going to um, put my stop signs in and circle my terms, but now when I'm down to solving for parentheses, I'm resolving the last part of my brackets here, and that would be what I would solve next. So 4 plus 5 is 9, and when I bring everything down again, now I have completely solved everything within those brackets and parentheses, so I would then move on to the other set of parentheses, which is over on this side. So now as I'm going to solve in the parentheses, 9 minus 6 is going to equal 3. And when I bring this 3 down, I have to show that it's 3 times 3. And if I bring the rest down, I will continue until I get down to just 9 times 9, or I'm sorry, 9 plus 9, and my answer will be 18. All right, in this problem, we have 3 times, and then in brackets, 8 minus 4 divided by, in parentheses, 10 minus 8, and parentheses, and brackets, minus 8. So, again, I would have to place my stop signs. But in this problem, because I only have one subtraction symbol that is not inside parentheses, I'm only going to need one stop sign and circle everything else that is on the outside of that stop sign. 
I'm going to look for my parentheses. I'm sorry, parentheses again. So the innermost parentheses I have are the 10 minus 8. That is what I would solve first, and I would get 2, and then bring everything else down. Of course, I have to remember that now that I have resolved the parentheses, I do not have to include them, but I do have to include the brackets because I still have things to solve inside the brackets. As I place my stop sign and circle my terms, I'm looking now again for parentheses, and inside I have division and subtraction, and division always comes before subtraction, so I would divide 4 divided by 2 and get 2 and bring everything else down. Again, I still have information inside the brackets, so I have to include that before I can bring everything else. So then I am my stop sign, continue with circling my terms because I still have more than just addition or subtraction, and I'm down to my last set of parentheses, which are the brackets. So 8 minus 2 is 6, and when I bring the rest down, I have 3 times 6 minus 8. I will need my last stop sign to circle my terms, and then I can solve, move past parentheses. I no longer have parentheses. I do not have any exponents, but I do have multiplication. And so that is what I would solve first. So 3 times 6 is 18. Bring everything else down. And now I don't need a stop sign, and I can solve 18 minus 8 is 10 and circle my answer. Are you ready to see if you solved the problem correctly? Hopefully you got the answer of 8. Let's move on to add some braces into our problems. In this problem, you're going to see that I've added in some braces. So we're going to follow the same procedure. You're always going to start with the parentheses or what is on the innermost first and work your way from left to right. So in this problem, I don't have any addition or subtraction that is not in a grouping symbol. So I would start with solving order of operations. So my first one that I would look at is the 6 minus 4. So 6 minus 4 is 2, and then I would bring everything else down. One of the toughest parts of problems like these is to remember to bring everything else down, which includes bringing down every bracket and brace, so that way you can continue to solve the problem correctly. So the next part of the problem that I would solve is back to parentheses or grouping symbols. Now my innermost is the brackets, so I would have to solve within that. And I have 8 divided by 2, and then 2 plus 1, so I know that I would solve 8 divided by 2 first, and that would give me 4, and then I'm going to bring everything else down. As you can see, I still have a problem within the brackets, so I have to make sure that I bring the brackets down. And again, I'm going to look for my grouping symbols to see what to solve first, and uh, since I still have the brackets, I would solve 4 plus 1, which is 5, and then bring everything else down. Now because I resolved the brackets, I no longer need to draw the brackets anymore. So I'm down to just looking at the parentheses or the grouping symbol of braces here. And so I would solve that as I normally would. 3 plus 5 is 8. And bring my last part of my problem down. And the last thing that I would have to solve is 16 divided by 8, which gives me my answer of 2. All right, pause the video as you solve this problem. Have you had an opportunity to solve the problem yet? Well, check your work. Hopefully you got one as your answer. In this video, you learned how to solve multi-operational problems using the order operations and focusing on grouping symbols.